Okay, we're going to solve some equations by, or we're going to solve equations that have fractions. So let's just get started here. We got two thirds x is equal to four. So we got two thirds times x is equal to four. We're multiplying these numbers so we can use our inverse operations and divide both sides by two thirds. So two thirds divided by two thirds is one x. So we're just left with an x. And you got 4 divided by 2 thirds, which is the same thing as 4, times 3 over 2, which, it, which becomes 12 over 2, which is 6. And remember, when you're multiplying, or sorry, when you're dividing fractions here, you, you take the inverse and multiply, right? Or, well, you, you take the reciprocal. You know, the reciprocal of 2 thirds is... 3 over 2 because when you multiply those together to get 1. So building on that, let's think about this. You got 5 ninths. Well, we, that's 5 ninths A is equal to 35. And we want this to be 1A, right? So if we can multiply 5 ninths by some number to give us 1, it might save us some steps. So let's think about 9 fifths, the re reciprocal, right? And you're, so 9 fifths. You know, 9 fifths times 5 ninths is just 1. And that's because 9 times 5 is 45. 5 times 9 is 45. 45 divided by 45 is just 1. So we're left with an A, right? So now we multiply this side over here by 9 fifths. To keep our equation in balance, we got to multiply this side by 9 fifths. So 5 goes into 35 seven times, so A is equal to 63. Let's look at another example. You've got this negative one-fourth x is equal to 100, right? And we uh, want this x to be 1, so let's just multiply it by its reciprocal, which would be negative 4 over 1. Or you could just write negative 4 if you want. That that would be okay. Well, this becomes x, right? 1x, and that's equal to negative 400. And this makes sense because if you do negative, if you do negative one fourth times a negative four hundred, you get a positive one hundred. Look at our last example. One seventh x is equal to twenty one. Well, we want this x by itself, and we want it to be one x. So, what number times one seventh gives us one? Well. One seventh of seven is one, right? If you want to put that one here, you can. If you don't, that's fine. If you're in my class, either way, I don't care. Uh, so, so one seventh of seven is one. And also, sometimes students, you know, learning this, they want to put that one x there. That's perfectly okay in my class. If you're on YouTube, you know, you just have to see what your teacher wants you to do. But either way. We multiply this side by 7, so we got to multiply this 21 by 7. So we got 21 times 7. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14, so it looks like that's 147. So our final answer is x is equal to 147. And once again, if you're in my class, either one of these will get you a right answer. And that's how we work with these fractions. If you're in my class, just a word of caution. I, I like these problems on any given test. There'll be enough of these to, um, you know, there'll be enough of these on there to to affect your uh, your final grade by letter grade. So get good at it because you want to see these for the rest of the year.